Stevie Coyle here at Mighty Fine Guitars with a very special guitar today. It is uh, February 21st, 2020. And like I always say, you just never know what's going to walk into the shop. And what walked into the shop the other day was moderately astonishing. And I'll show you here in just a second. Do let me know because I've done some adjustments with the microphone in here and whatnot here. Let me know if you're getting good audio and whatnot. I sent it out, if anybody knows, I think I've asked about this before, where I can get a longer cable for this blue raspberry microphone. Let me know, because I could really stand a longer cable. Well, Ducky, if you wouldn't mind, follow me over here, and we'll take a look at this fancy guitar. You'll notice it's in a very strange little, what they call a coffin case. This was 19th century technology, kids. This is kind of what it was. I'm going to shout to get over to the microphone. In fact, I think I'll turn it a little bit and then I'll turn it back. The original hasps, even if people have these old coffin cases, frequently they, the hasps have broken off. This is all original. And it has just two hasps, a pine box, kind of shaped like a coffin. And take a look at this. Oh. Bum, 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 bum. Wah, wah, wah. This, all of this white business, this light colored stuff that you're looking at, kids, is, uh, is abalone, it's shell, mother of pearl, but it is inlaid as well with silver and copper and uh, God knows what. The guitar just came in. I'm going to be doing some more, um, going to be doing some more research on it. And I'll tell you what I know so far, and then another week, I'll tell you the rest. So there it is, fabulous green felt. Thank you, Ducky. Now let's come over here, take a look at it. Pardon me for noises, kids. There it is, front and back. Beautiful maple back and sides, a single piece back, which is rather unusual in today's technology. Maple back and sides, maple neck, uh, original tuners, all in fine shape, not crumbly because they're sadly ivory, elephant ivory. From the uh, 1850s again, I did a little research on this and I talked to my pal Taya Gherkin, figuring Taya knows just about everything about everything about guitars and he said, well, I don't know much about European guitars from the 1850s, which is all that the owner who brought it in knew was that it's a, f he thought French from the 1850s. It, uh, I talked to Taya. Taya said, no, 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 you got to talk to John Mendel, M-E-N-D-L-E, -E, wonderful player of older uh, European music, a classical guitarist, and expert on this sort of stuff. Talked to him on Facebook Messenger, of all places, of course, where everything happens. And he said, well, you know what? It's beautiful. I think it was probably made in Miracour, I'm going to slaughter the pronunciation here, Miracour, M-I-R-E-C-O-U-R-T, Miracour, I don't know, I'm from Salinas. And uh, he said, check inside and see if there's any stamp sort of inside. And I had looked, but I looked more closely, and sure enough, towards the upper bout, on the back of the guitar is stamped kind of diagonally. Going this way, it says... Um, Aubrey, A-U-B-R-Y, and going this way, says Mare, M-A-I-R-E, Aubrey Mare. And he said that was a really fine studio in France in the 1850s. That's quite a guitar you've got there. And he said, but I don't think I've ever seen one quite so ornate. They tended to be beautifully overdone like this. Nothing succeeds like excess, as old Oscar Wilde tells us. And sure enough, this is an example of that. But the great feature of this guitar is it actually plays. Alan Perlman got a hold of it. The gentleman who owns it took it to Alan Perlman, ace repair and luthier guy over in San Francisco. And uh, Alan redid the fingerboard and the frets, which were all kind of spaced inappropriately for the way it's strung now. Back then, of course, there weren't steel strings. They used gut strings, what we call cat gut, which is not cat guts. It was sheep guts. It's different. Intestines you know, rolled and stretched as those were the strings. This has been redone to support really, really light gauge steel strings. And it 
actually plays. sort of sound but really sweet it's got a certain sweetness to it oh I told you all about the sides being maple and whatnot European maple the top is some kind of I'm guessing Swiss spruce this is that really fine grain stuff that the violin players really like to use and violin makers really like to use that uh, that makes for really fine tops very stiff wood so you can make it very thin and it turns out to be very resonant and all in all this guitar for all of this Price-wise, talked to John Mendel. He said somewhere, somewhere. I said what, like ten thousand dollars? He said, Oh no, 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 south of that, considerably south of that. So we're gonna press. Hit me with an email. I'll tell you what the price is on this one. This old, 170 years old now, nearly, and have it actually play. It's remarkable. If next time you're out on YouTube, and by the way, I'm putting all of these, you these uh, Friday noontime Facebook webcasts up on YouTube under the Mighty Fine Guitarist channel. I'll post a link down below to show you how to get to that. If you ever want to go back and check out some other guitars from the past three, four years, perhaps, they'll all be up there. Anyway. Next time you're out on YouTube, look up me, Stevie Coyle, and Martin Guitars, and you will see me freaking out. I probably mentioned this before on the Noontime webcasts. I was visiting the Martin factory a few years ago, and Dick Boke uh, said, you know, let me give you the tour. Come on in. He showed me all around the place. It was fantastic. He said, let's have lunch, but first I got some stuff to do. Go into the, go into the uh, uh, museum and have a look around. Well, you step into the museum. And right there on your left is that first Martin that you've seen on the covers of lots of the Martin books with a Stouffer headstock, really small body like this with the Stouffer style scrolly headstock. I thought, there it is. That's that actual guitar. Unbelievable. <clears throat> then there were the Perry Bechtel guitars. Then there was Hank Williams's guitar and Neil Young's guitar and all these famous guitars all sitting there looking beautiful and fabulous. And then I wonder how many of these are actually playable, you know, nowadays. As it turns out, hey there. Hey, oh, I got a package. Hang on a, fo a second, folks. Let me sign something good here. There we go. Thank you very much. Is it from Ed McMahon? Yes. Excellent. I've won the publisher's clearinghouse, folks. Thank you very much. Yeah. Is it? No, I didn't. Oh. No, I lied. Have a good day. Thank you. I'll have a pretty good day. This is reasonably good news. It's not Ed McMahon good news, but it's pretty good news. Well, um... So there I was, exhausted halfway through the museum because of all this fabulousness going on there. And there's a little lounge area sort of in the middle there. And I was sitting down talking to some nice Canadian people who were down visiting this uh, museum in Pennsylvania, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And we were just chatting. And all of a sudden, I feel a tap on my shoulder. And a guitar comes sliding in this way. And it's, I said, oh, Dick, what, what have you handed me? And he said, take a look. And it was that first Martin from 1833, the first one made in America. He handed it to me, and he said, no, go ahead and play it. I said, it plays, really? And sure enough, it played. This one, sure enough, plays. It's astonishing vibe to feel an instrument like this play. <laughs> <laughs> this one takes a really light touch. It's easy to pull the strings out of tune by having too much pressure in the left hand, which is as a teacher, a note I give everyone, including myself, all the time. If there's no other note I can give on something somebody's working on, it's you could probably go with less left-hand pressure. 
We all do that, especially those of us <laughs> that uh, burn the circuits in our brains on old bad guitars where the action was really high. We got used to clutching that thing, just squeezing the daylights out of it. So lightening up on your touch is really something. I had occasion once to play Tommy Emanuel's guitar, The Waybacks, the band I was with, a uh, Menudo rather, the band I was with years ago, played uh, a number of shows in advance of Tommy Emanuel back east. And uh, at one of the shows, he saw me kind of eyeballing his guitar sitting up on the couch there, and he said, yeah, go ahead and play it. I picked it up, I couldn't really play it. The strings were so light, and the action was so low, which meant that his touch is so fantastic that I kept pulling things out of tune just by fretting with my usual finger pressure. I'd sharp things out too much. It was a real lesson in lightness, because there's Tommy Emanuel and then there's Mere Mortals. And his playing style is so intensely technical, but intensely musical at the same time. There's lots of lessons to be learned from really great players like that, and sometimes from their guitars. And sure enough, I learned a, a big lesson from Tommy Emanuel's guitar, that you can have a guitar strung really light, and the action can be really low, and uh, it can be played properly, and there's lessons to be learned from lightening up in the left hand a long way around. <laughs> So this is, uh, in, in sending up all of those videos to YouTube off of uh, Facebook, and there's no convenient way to do that. You've got to download them from Facebook, send them back up to YouTube. I learned that, boy, I tend to talk a lot. Holy smoke. So I'm going to try and trim down and f try and keep these under, keep them around 10, maybe 15 minutes. Some of these things stretched on for 45 minutes, an hour. Preposterous. Unless i got a cool guest in. Uh, there's, there's nothing that can't be said. Uh, much more economically, without people tuning out, uh, not even midway into it. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep things down to 10, 15 minutes. So this is, I don't know if the actual brand of this one would be called Aubrey Mayer, and I don't know if I'm mispronouncing that horribly. A-U-B-R-Y-M-A-I-R-E is what the stamp inside says. And just to recap, this is um, not only abalone all the way around the, the purfling, and the rosette and the bridge it's inlaid ducky can you kind of get in close on this and and get a i want to stay in the the reasonably good light here but if you could come around and kind of get in close on some of this action in particular and show the folks the the incredible inlay work sure this is all shell this is all abalone and mother of pearl around here but inside that on top of that is inlay. An incredible amount of work on this. And it would be beautiful just as an art piece, just something to hang on the wall. And certainly I've had people come into the shop and just point at things and say, I'll take that one. And I'll ask, oh, just kind of curious, why did you choose that one? Oh, I didn't have a sunburst. Or, oh, I didn't have one that color. You know, some people use guitars as wallpaper. So this would be fabulous wallpaper, but it also actually plays, and it plays really good. It intonates properly, the action is lovely. Got to have a light touch, and probably just strictly for finger style. But there it is, the Aubrey Mare. Thanks for tuning in, kids. Thank you, Jimbo Scott, for hanging out. Stay, uh, come tune, tune back in in a week or two. We're going to have Jimbo Scott come in and play, and uh, he's a terrific player. We'll, we'll get you caught up on everything Jimbo Scott. And JimboScott.com? JimboScottMusic. JimboScottMusic.com. J-I-M-B-O-S-C-O-T-T music, spelled like music, dot com. We'll get you there. So thanks for tuning in today. The Friday Noontime webcast from Mighty Fine Guitars. Uh, get a little play? Oh, a little more play? I guess that was the missing piece, wasn't it?
Thanks, kids. Stevie Coyle, signing off from Mighty Fine Guitars in Lafayette, California. See you next week.